In this video, we're going to wrap up the section by using the NPM module called Sharp to process the images supplied by users before we save them. That's going to allow us to do a couple of exciting things. One, we'll be able to resize images, so if someone uploads a huge image, we don't actually want to store that since our little profile pictures are always going to be small in terms of how they're presented on the client. So we can go ahead and reduce them to a specific size. We can also convert the image type. So we can store all of our images in a unified type. And for this one, we're going to go with PNGs. So even if someone uploads a JPEG, the sharp NPM module will be able to convert that to a PNG for us. Now, before we get into any of that, there are a couple of other things I want to clean up from the section. First up, we can go ahead and delete the avatars folder right here. This is no longer going to be used. And we can also delete that images directory since that's now done as well. Over in index.js, we had worked through this little example to see how we could set up Malter. We can go ahead and delete that as well. So right here, we have the file we had before. And once I remove all of those empty spaces, we have 15 lines of code total. The last thing we're going to do before we worry about integrating Sharp has to do with the user model. I'm going to head over to that file. I'm going to scroll down to the to JSON method. And what we're going to do right here is remove the avatar data. In the last video, we set up a URL that can serve the image up. So there's no need to send it back with profile requests because the data is so large. It really does slow down those JSON based requests. Right here, we can solve that problem using delete. Off of user object, we are going to delete the following avatar and we're done. Now, if we save the program, we're still going to be able to access the image in the way we set up earlier. If I refresh the page right here, I can still see my robot, which is fantastic. All we've done is we've removed it from the profile response. So if I was to use Postman, and make a request to the read profile request, I would get back the same data we had before. There's no avatar here, and that's a good thing. Now that we've knocked out a couple of those little housekeeping items, what I want to go ahead and do is focus on what's inside of the user router. We're going to install the Sharp module, and we're going to make some changes to this route right here. We get the image and we immediately take the buffer and we put it on the avatar field. We're going to use Sharp in between to change that data. Now let's go ahead and explore Sharp in the browser, then we'll install it and actually use it. Over here, I'm going to close some leftover documentation tabs and I'll switch my JS bin one over to the following. I'm just going to Google NPM Sharp. Now, the first result should be the Sharp module on npmjs.com, which it is. And right here, we have some documentation for how we can use this. Now, in their little summary, they show us what exactly this module is for. It's really great for resizing images and converting their formats, and we're going to use it for both of those things. We'll make sure we come up with a common unified dimension for profile pictures, so when they're shown in the user interface, they always look correct. And we're also going to convert all of the images over to the same type, in this case, PNGs. Now, the documentation for Sharp leaves a little bit to be desired. There's really just a couple of examples. And to be honest, they don't even include everything that the library can do. So we'll walk through the common use case inside of the code in VSC. Let's get started by heading over to Visual Studio Code and shutting down our dev server. I'm then going to install the module npm i sharp at the latest version 0.21.1. And then we'll take a quick moment to start the dev server back up once things are installed. All we're going to do is load sharp in and add a couple of method calls inside of that route handler. There's not that much we actually need to do because sharp takes care of all of the complex stuff for us. Up at the top of the user router, we can go ahead and load the module in. Right here, a new constant called sharp, which we will get by requiring the module we're currently installing called sharp. And then down below, we can focus on actually using it inside of that endpoint. 
Now, Sharp uses a lot of libraries behind the scenes to make everything possible, to actually make it possible for us to convert those image types and to resize them, and that's why the installation process takes a bit longer than some of the other modules we've used before, which simply contain a few JavaScript files. Either way, things are done, and down below, I'll use npm run dev to start up that dev server once again, and all we're gonna do is make a few changes to how this particular endpoint works. To start, I'm gonna comment out this line right here. We're still gonna be setting a value on request.user.avatar, but Sharp is going to give us the value we set. We're going to give it the original image and it will convert it for us. So right here, let's go ahead and actually get that done. The first thing we're gonna do is create a new constant to store the output from Sharp so this will be a buffer of the modified image file. That's what we'll eventually save to the database. And right here, we are gonna use await since Sharp is asynchronous. Now to start, we call Sharp providing it with the original file data. In our case, request.file.buffer is where that's stored. It's exactly what we were using down below. Now, what we do is we use the to buffer method to convert that back to a buffer that we can access. Now, at this point, we actually haven't done anything. We've passed the data to Sharp and we've asked Sharp for the data back. What we wanna do is use other methods right in between, right here, to modify that image. The one we can use is .png. .png doesn't take any arguments, all it does is it converts the image over to the PNG format. So now we're working with just PNGs in terms of what's gonna be saved to the database, and that'll make our lives a little easier down the line. The other method we can use is resize. Resize allows us to resize a given image, and this is something we definitely want to do. When users are uploading images, we wanna make sure that they conform to a specific criteria. Now, when it comes to actually allowing users to crop images with a GUI, that's something you would set up on the client side. So whether it was an iPhone app, an Android app, or a web application, you would use a client side tool or a plugin to get that done. We can't do that on the server. We're not gonna show them a GUI. We're just going to resize the image to a standard size right here. We provide an object to resize with width and height properties. I'm gonna set the width equal to something like 250, and I'll set the height equal to 250 as well. So now, if a user was to take a 4K picture with their phone in the JPEG format, they would upload it, it would be reduced to 250 by 250, and it would be converted over to a PNG. Now, once again, Depending on your needs, you might want a larger or smaller image, or maybe you don't want to resize it at all. The choice is totally up to you. In this case, though, with avatars, you do want to go ahead and come up with a uniform size you can depend on. So when you're building out the client, you know that all of your avatar images will be the same size. Now, all we need to do from here is uncomment this line. We still want to set a value for the avatar field, though the value will be different. Instead of grabbing the original file data, we're gonna grab the file data that Sharp has provided. This is the modified image. Now that we know we're always working with PNG images, regardless of what the user uploads, we can make a change to our request down below where we serve that image up. We can update the content type from image forward slash JPG to image forward slash PNG, and we're gonna be confident that this is always correct because we're reformatting the image before saving it. Now let's go ahead and actually test our work. I'm going to save user.js and all we're going to do is run the exact same update avatar request we've been running from Postman. Right here, I've executed this maybe a dozen or so times over the last five videos. We're not gonna make any changes to it, we're just going to send the same data off again, but the actual image should be changed because of the code we've added. Now let's go over to Google Chrome and go over to that tab where we were accessing the avatar. Right here, I have the full size image. The resolution is 1920 by 1080. And if I were to right click it and click save image as, I can see down below that I'm working with a JPEG. Now let's go ahead and refresh the page and see what we get back for the new result. Right here, 
I have an image of the resolution 250 by 250 and down below, I can still see my robot in the profile picture. So obviously I've taken a rectangle and I've converted it into a square. So I've lost a little bit of the content along the sides, but most of it is indeed still showing exactly as I would have wanted. Now, if you do want to give the user more fine grain control, that's something you'll have to do on the user interface for your application. Now that we've seen the resolution is correct, let's right click the image, go to save image as, and here we can see we're working with a PNG, which is fantastic. So with this in place, we now have a way to make sure that the data we're getting from the user is normalized. Just like we validate email addresses and convert them to lower case and remove the spaces on the sides, we can also go ahead and normalize our images, bringing them to a standard resolution and standard file format. That's where we're going to stop for this video. And that's also where we're going to stop for this section. In this section, we spent our time learning how we can support file uploads with express. This allowed us to create a management system so users can manage their profile picture. Down below between these three endpoints, a user can perform all of those CRUD operations. First, we have C for create that can be done with this route. Then we have R for read, which is done down below. We have U for update, which is also done with this endpoint. And finally, D for delete. So that is it for this section. In the next section, we're going to talk about how we can send emails with Node.js. I'm really excited to get to that. So let's jump into the section introduction for the next one.